Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So here we are, only six days into 2023, and we already have our first assault weapons ban of the year. That didn't take long at all. So we're going to be talking about it today because it also bans magazines, raises age limit to 21, and does a lot more. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get started, Look, the tubes don't like what we're doing here. They don't like what we're talking about. They don't like us talking about freedom. And so things are getting suppressed. So if you wouldn't mind, if you're watching this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification to make sure that you know when new videos come out and always leave a comment. The comment section is there for you guys to discuss the video's topics and it actually gets pretty good. So I wanna thank you again very much for watching this video. Let's get to it. So let me start off by saying this. I, I personally believe that if you're going to take office and you're going to swear an oath to the Constitution, you should at least have read it. You should at least have a basic understanding of it because what was passed last night, late last night, is completely unconstitutional. But Governor J.B. Pritzker doesn't care. He got exactly what he wanted when the House passed HB 5855. And this bill does a lot. Now, don't you guys love the names they give these things? They always try to make it sound so soft and so sweet, like HB 5855, which is also known as the Protect Illinois Communities Act. Who are they protecting by disarming the average citizen, not allowing them to defend themselves? Who, who exactly are they looking to protect with this? Well, let's talk about what the bill does. So the first thing this bill does, like I said in the beginning, is it bans so-called assault weapons. That's the one big ticket item that all of these states have in common, and that's exactly what this bill bans right here, even though, whatever you want to call them, they are protected by the Second Amendment. You can give them any name you want. You can call them Jennifer if you want. They're still protected by the Second Amendment. We know this because the Supreme Court has said that any firearm that's in common use for lawful purposes is therefore protected by the Second Amendment. And this is one of the most popular items in the entire country. It is protected, but they don't care. They're going to go ahead and ban it anyway. Now, there's going to be somewhat of a grandfather clause here where you're going to have a specific amount of time. If you already own one, you can go ahead and register it with the state. Go ahead and give us all of your information. Let us know who you are, what you have, and register that with the state. But as far as anything new or being able to transfer anything, forget it. That's banned off the, off the table. Now, another thing this bill does is it raises the age limit in which you can actually begin to practice your rights. So in Illinois, you have to get a FOID card, which is your firearm owner identification card. Well, instead of being 18, now you got to be 21, 21 years of age before you can actually start participating in your Second Amendment rights, which to me just absolutely blows my mind. You can vote, you can sign contracts. I mean, you could buy a house when you're 18 years old. Uh, I mean, you could join the military. I mean, you name it, right? You're, you're 18. You have all of your rights. You're a, an adult citizen in the United States. But in Illinois, not adult enough, apparently. Oh, and well, let's not forget the other big ticket item, the magazine ban. This also includes a magazine ban banning anything that can hold more than 10 rounds. So if it can hold more than 10 rounds, it's now off limits in Illinois. Well, that's if the Senate actually passes 58-55, which they're 100% expected to do. As a matter of fact, J.B. Pritzker was at the vote last night. This guy was willing to get out of bed, go down there. He was so interested in it that he actually hung around just for the vote. And of course it passed. It goes on to the Senate now where it is, again, like I said, expected to pass no problem, in which case it'll head up to Pritzker's desk and he will go ahead and sign it. He's already stated that he's signing he had through, basically through his full support behind this bill. So again, while it just passed the House, it's almost a near guarantee that it's going to end up in front of Pritzker. I mean, this is like their Christmas wish list. They're getting absolutely everything that they want here, including expanded red flag laws, because nothing says I live in a free country like having the ability to go behind somebody's back, fill out an affidavit, and have their rights removed from them, as well as their personal property, completely eliminating due process while they can go ahead and defend themselves at a later date. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but that feels pretty free to me, right? No, no, it doesn't. Not, not at all. But that's what's happening in Illinois. They're going to determine what you can have, how much of it you can have. They're going to go behind your back. I mean, this is absolutely terrible. It just flies in the face of our constitutional rights, our civil rights, and it 
it can't be left to stand. I mean, like all these other states that are trying to do it right now, this has got to stop. And I know that, I mean, once it's signed, you're going to see the lawsuits begin to absolutely fly on this one. You're going to see a lot of lawsuits coming in from just about every direction. I think they know that as well. And I think they know that after the Bruin decision, it's pretty much going to be an uphill battle because there's no way to go back in time, back in, in history from the ratification of the Second Amendment uh, on forward to the Reconstruction era and say that there's something there that you can look at to reference the new law that you just created. It's just, it's not there. So this new law will be unconstitutional. It, it's unconstitutional already, but once it, it's passed, I, I know that it'll be deemed unconstitutional. The problem is, is that the court system takes forever. It takes forever for things to actually go through. These things take years. I mean, look at California. We've been some, following some of these cases for nearly a decade now, and people still haven't seen relief. So that's, that's one of the biggest problems is just, you know, getting relief for the people that are having their rights infringed on in a timely manner. So, you know, this passed by a vote of 64 to 43. So it passed by a pretty good majority. It's probably going to pass by a pretty good majority in the Senate as well and head up to Pritzker's desk. And I think it's all going to happen really, really fast. So I, I, you know, I feel bad for the people of Illinois, but don't give up. There's going to be, like I said, a lot of lawsuits and there's a lot of people on your side that uh, will hopefully be able to restore your rights once this bill actually does get signed. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.